Your podcast intro and outro are the bookends of your episodes. But if you're just getting started, you may not know what to say in your intro, where to find theme music, or how to edit everything together. That's why today I'm excited to teach you how to script and edit a professional podcast intro for your show, including a very simple editing demo where you'll see that you don't need expensive or complicated tools to create a high quality intro that helps your podcast grow. Hey, I'm Melissa, the founder of Wit & Wire, where I help creators turn their skills and passions into profitable online businesses. I'm the host of the Wit & Wire podcast and Booksmart, and the creator of the number two career podcast, Everything is Teachable, featured under Apple's best new career podcasts in the United States. More importantly, I've helped thousands of podcasting students through Wit & Wire's online programs. And today's lesson is a sneak peek from the Podcast Launch Accelerator program. I'll leave a link to the full program below, but let's jump right in with step one, scripting. Your podcast intro, also called a podcast theme, is a short 10 to 30 second introduction that plays at the beginning of each episode to give your listeners context about the purpose of your podcast. Remember, every single episode you publish will always be someone's first episode. And that's why it's so important to include a strong intro because it sets the tone for your listeners and it answers these key questions. Number one, what's this podcast about? Number two, who is the host and what makes them the right person for the job? And number three, is this podcast for me? It's a lot to fit into 10 to 30 seconds, but brevity is key because if you ramble on and on for too long, you're going to lose listeners before they even have a chance to get to your great content. And before we get into some examples, I want to offer a quick tip for new or growing hosts. The most common mistake I see hosts make with their intro, other than rambling, is leaving out an explanation about why you are the host for this podcast. So instead of just your name, how can you add a brief credential or explanation to give me context? I recommend a professional or personal identity. So a professional identity might be something like registered dietitian and nutrition therapist, but you definitely don't need to be an expert or guru to be a great podcast host. So a personal identity could be fellow single parent or personal development junkie. We don't need a full bio, but those few words go a long way. You'll also want to include your podcast name and a quick pitch for your show. So if you need help, I do have a free resource linked below called Podcast Intro and Outro Scripts, and it includes the checklist of what to include, what to leave out, plus starter scripts and real examples for inspiration. I also recommend paying attention to your favorite podcasts in your shows or niche because studying what you like is often the best way to create. To be clear, I never want you to copy, but studying those favorite shows may spark ideas that you can adapt to suit your podcast and your style. As an example, here's the intro script for my own podcast, The Wit & Wire Podcast. Welcome to The Wit & Wire Podcast. I'm Melissa, a former Teachable employee and marketing director turned full-time course creator, and I help entrepreneurs turn their skills and passions into profitable online businesses. Feel free to borrow my structure to say, welcome to your podcast here, I'm your name, and then give a little bit of an intro and move into the elevator pitch. And to answer a quick FAQ, who should read the podcast intro? Some podcast hosts read their own intro, but you may hear others hire a voiceover artist to introduce them. I've done both throughout my podcast career, but I prefer a host read because when I imagine your new listeners tuning in, I don't want someone else's voice to be the first thing they hear. I actually think it's riskier in case that person's voice isn't quite right, but that is just my opinion. So if you decide to hire a friend or a voiceover talent, then at the end of the intro, you would have them say something like, here's your host, Melissa Guller. Once your script is ready, it's time for step two, record your intro. I'm actually gonna record mine twice using two different tools because I thought it might be helpful to show you two very different editing experiences in my two favorite platforms. So first I'll use Hindenburg, which is a classic DAW or digital audio workstation, and it's what I've used for years. Audacity is a similar free option, but I think Hindenburg is much friendlier to use and it's a one-time payment, not a subscription. So it's much more affordable than things like Adobe or Pro Tools. Then the second tool you'll see me use is called Descript, which is very different. Descript is a modern option that lets you edit audio and video by modifying an automatically generated on-screen transcript. You'll find links to free trials for both tools in the description, but let's see the difference. Here we have a blank project in Hindenburg, and I'm gonna click this red icon to say that this is the track I wanna record into. And then along the bottom, I'm going to hit record in a second to get the intro. So let's do it. Welcome to the Wit & Wire podcast, and I help entrepreneurs turn their skills and passions into profitable online businesses. Let's just zoom in a little bit 
you can see that there's a little part at the beginning that I'll probably trim like this. And then this part at the end, I'm just clicking on the end and dragging my cursor. So at this point, my Hindenburg recording is ready to go. And now let's open up Descript. By the way, if you are new to Descript, you can get a free trial by going to witandwire.com slash Descript. And I also created a separate Descript tutorial by popular demand if you wanna check that out next. There's a link in the description below. Here is our blank project in Descript, and I'm going to go up to the top where you see the microphone. And then I like to make sure that it's using the correct mic. You can see I need to switch this to the Shure MV7, and then we will click record. Welcome to the Wit & Wire podcast. And I help entrepreneurs turn their skills and passions into profitable online businesses. Let's hit stop. It'll probably catch me saying, let's hit stop in the recording. So just to briefly show you what Descript is capable of, I can actually just highlight this text and click backspace, and that will actually edit the audio file. By the way, if your podcast contains sensitive language or content, you may want to include a brief disclaimer that plays right after your intro and before your content. A quick note like that helps listeners know they might want to wear headphones if they're near kids, or it's particularly important if there are sensitive subjects, but you know your podcast best. Now at this point, I have a version I'm happy with in both, and we're ready for my favorite part, which is step three, find the music. In the description below, you'll find links to some of my favorite resources for royalty-free music with both free and paid options. But I wanna quickly talk about what that means and why it's so important. When you think about your favorite song on the radio, that is a copyrighted song. So in order to use copyrighted music, you would need to pay money for that right. And that money is often paid out as something called a royalty. As podcasters, we don't want to do that. We don't want to pay, and we definitely don't want to infringe on anyone's copyrights. So we can't use any of those popular songs, and that's why what you're looking for is called royalty-free music. And that means you don't need to pay royalties for the right to the track. Then within the world of royalty-free music, you'll find both free and paid options. You can pay anywhere from $1 to $50 for a great podcast theme track. And of course, much higher than that too. I've typically paid around $20 to $50 personally, but I do recommend paying that one-time fee for the license to a song because you do get what you pay for and paying tends to give you a much better selection. So you can either spend a lot of time finding a gold nugget in the world of free music, or you can pay just a little bit of money, perhaps for a wider selection that's a little easier to browse. Again, you'll find a full list of all of my favorite sites in the description, but let me open a few to show you how I might browse to find a theme track for a podcast. So right now I'm looking at Audio Jungle, but no matter which site you choose, what I like to do is try searching for something that brings up the right emotion that you're looking for, or you can go ahead into music and you can see they have a lot of different sections. Maybe I would start off with something ambient if that's what you were going for. I really just wanna show you that there are so many different filters and the websites all have different options. So you can try looking by newest, you can try looking into some of these other keywords. Maybe I wanted something that felt like a coffee shop track. And then once you search, this is really what I was looking for, where now you can just start to see all of these filters give you so much to play with. I like to search by different tempos because certain shows may want a faster or a slower tempo. You can also come back up here to see lounge has categories, or excuse me, ambient has categories, back into all categories. Now you can start to see under music, we have all of these different options. So I like to hit play on these and you can start to hear what the track sounds like. And some of the tracks come with different options. So as an example, if I click into coffee shop, you can see that it has a track here and it almost looks like it stops. If you see that kind of on and off in the wave, that can often mean that there are different versions that you can download. And sometimes if you scroll down, you'll see this one says that there are different versions. One can be looped. That means if you play it from start to finish, it can play again seamlessly. And the benefit of having these different links, again, it's usually that the beginning and the end of the track is slightly different. So it just gives you some good variety to play with. Here's another website I like called Foxy Music. You can scroll down and see they have some really fun descriptions and you can go into collections to see different styles. Maybe let's try fashion and lifestyle. And then once again, the filters I think are the crucial piece on any website, no matter where you're searching. You can see curated collections, but you can also see different tags. There are way more. You can try different genres, moods, or styles. So I think instead of just browsing aimlessly, trying to think about the emotion that you want your listeners to feel while they tune into your show can be a great way to find the right music. 
Once you find something on any of these tracks, you'll want to download it. You'll see this download demo button is the way that you can find a preview with a watermark. And that's one way you can see how it'll sound with your own voice. I want to show one more example. Purple Planet is one of many archives that includes free options, not just royalty free, but dollars free. And usually you can see they have using our free music. You want to make sure that you follow their guidelines because if it's free, often what they want in exchange is credit. So you can see that you need to include just a link back to Purple Planet. Make sure if you do not pay for your track, if it is in fact a free download, you give the credit where credit is due. By the way, there are two ways I like to test how the music will sound on my podcast. One way is to hit play on the website and then hit play on my recording in Hindenburg or Descript. I think it's just much easier to hear what it'll sound like when it plays with my voice. And then the other thing you can do from many of these websites is to download a preview track. There will be an audio mark on the track. So you'll hear the track play, but then you'll hear like audio jungle over it. And they do that to make sure you don't steal the track, but to let you test it out in your project before purchasing. Once you find, purchase, and download your track or a few previews, you're ready for step four, editing. Let's start with Hindenburg. So here we have our pre-recorded voiceover. I'm gonna call this Melissa, and then we're gonna use this second track. We can call it music. You don't have to rename them, but I thought it would be helpful. And then I'll go ahead and delete these other two. And now to import music into this track, you can either click the import button or I actually have the file just off screen and I'm just gonna drag and drop it in. You can see this is automatically auto leveling because Hindenburg is trying to match the loudness of the track with the loudness of your voice. But you can hover over the top and adjust this manually as well. Now the first thing I like to do is figure out where I actually want my speaking voice to come in because I don't usually put it all the way at the beginning. I'm just dragging this around. I usually like to let the music play maybe for a second or two, not for too long, but let's hear how that sounds. Welcome to the Wit & Wire podcast. I would probably play around with that a little bit, but let's pretend I like where it is. The other things you may wanna do are fade in at the beginning or fade out at the end. So if you wanted to add in a fade, I'm just gonna zoom in what you'll do is click onto this track and then on the top corner, if you just click and you hold it down and you drag it, that creates a fade. And the steeper the angle, the more subtle the fade would be. So this, you won't hear very much of a fade. This is a very long fade. So I don't know if I want it for this track. I think I'm gonna revert this back to normal. And then the place I really wanna edit is at the end. I want to fade out after I'm done speaking. So I'm actually gonna come in over here and maybe right here on the track, when you click on it, you can use Command B on a Mac or Control B on a PC, and that'll just trim the clip. You can kind of delete the rest. And then I'm gonna shorten this just by trimming. And I do want a bit of a fade. So let me grab this top corner and then make an incline. And I wanna leave a little bit of space because in future episodes, when I record whatever comes right after this to introduce the episode, I want the music to overlap a little bit. So let's play it from here profitable online businesses. I like the length of this fade right where this playhead is the white line. That's about where I would have the voiceover come in of the actual episode content when I started to use this. But I think for now, this looks good. The only other thing you could do, which is a little bit advanced is called ducking. Unlike fades, a duck is when you kind of uh, dip the audio under a voiceover. So just to show you what that looks like, if you wanted the music to be a little bit louder up here, but then when you start talking, you wanted it to kind of dip down. What you'll do is select this piece of audio on the bottom track. And then if you hover over the top, once you drag this down, it creates this dip or a duck. And you can adjust any of the dots to change where the fade starts, how long it lasts, and how significant it is. So just to show you, here's what that sounds like. Welcome to the Wit & Wire podcast. It's subtle, but you can hear that it's just slightly softer. Once you have it ready to go, you'll go up to export and export just this as a WAV file. And then in the future, when you're creating new episodes, you'll bring in that finished edited podcast intro to any episode that you create. Back in Descript, here is our intro. You can see within Descript, there are two places you can edit, either within the interactive transcript or on the bottom. And what I'm gonna do in order to add the music is put my cursor right at the beginning and then you can go to the plus icon and we're going to add a track. So let me just find that file on my computer. Now, 
As you may notice on the bottom, the theme track is much longer <laughs> than the script. So what I'm gonna do is just come right about here maybe, and then I'll use the blade tool like this to make a cut, and then back over to the selector to get rid of this. Remember, there is a complete Descript tutorial if you're looking for the full step-by-step -step walkthrough on using this tool in the description below. Once I have that cut, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. You can use this bar to zoom in. And then what I wanna do is fade this in like this. If you wanted a bit of a subtle fade, you can do the same thing at the end of the track. But what you may also wanna do is move where this starts. You can see how I'm able to pick it up and drag it. And I have a little space here before the start of my voiceover, but let's say you didn't have that. Let's say that this was trimmed right to the beginning, which is a good best practice to kind of trim out that kind of space. You'll notice you can't just drag this before the voiceover starts. So what you can do is if you right click, you can add a gap clip and you can see how that puts a little bit of time at the beginning. And now you can actually attach, it's almost like attaching that audio into the gap space. So here's how it sounds. Welcome to the Wit and Wire podcast. Great, we're in business. Next, we can go to the end and figure out where you would want it to fade out. Maybe I had gone too far here, so let me make this a little shorter. And then again, you can just click this top part to create a fade. And let's see how that sounds. Profitable online businesses. Once I like how that sounds, I can go up here to the top to click share. And Descript is interesting. I'm gonna give you a few options. The first thing you can do is export just the audio. That'll give you a single file that you could import into future Descript projects. But what's really interesting with Descript is that you could keep this here. And then if you wanted to bring this into another project, you just highlight the text. And if you click copy, you can just paste that right into a new project. As a pro tip, one way hosts simplify their editing process is to save a template project. So let's say you're using Hindenburg or Descript. What you would do is save a template project with your intro ready to go and sometimes even an outro, and then you duplicate that whole file every time you start a new episode. So it's up to you if you prefer to export your finished podcast intro as a WAV file or if you prefer the project template approach. FAQ number one, do you record a new intro every time? Great question. And there are actually two approaches here and you'll find examples for both in the free download, podcast intro and outro scripts below this video. The first strategy is the most common one and I call it the universal intro. And it's what you saw me do here. In this case, you record your intro once and you use that exact same edited version with the same music in every episode. That's again, what you saw me do in the demo. But the second strategy I call an intro starter where you use the same starter script every time, but you quickly move into introducing the episode. As an example, here's the starter script for Gretchen Rubin's podcast, Happier. She says, hello and welcome to Happier, a podcast about strategies and solutions for having a happier life. This week we'll talk about, and then she gets right into an episode overview. Both strategies work well, but if you don't wanna worry about editing a new version with music every time, I would stick with the universal intro. FAQ number two. Does the intro have to play first at the very beginning of the episode? It doesn't. There are some podcasts that lead with a hook, which might be a quote from your guest or a brief intro read by the host to pique a little bit of interest. There are other shows that might lead with an ad. Although if you've seen my video on the top 10 ways to earn money podcasting, you know that I think there are much more profitable ways to earn money podcasting. So I'll leave a link in the description. But if you wanna get a little fancy, you should absolutely feel free to go for it. Creativity is half the fun of podcasting. But if you wanna keep it simple, the most common format is to start with the standard podcast theme and then welcome people into the episode right after. Creating a great podcast intro is just one piece that goes into launching a new podcast. And if you are curious to learn more, I have a free masterclass linked in the description called how to launch a podcast and get your first 1000 listens. So if you're interested to learn more about some of the common do's and don'ts of podcasting and how to create a great show that lasts, you'll find a link in the description, or you can visit witandwire.com slash register. If you found this video helpful, I would love to ask you to leave a thumbs up on the video and don't forget to subscribe before you go. But up next, since I know you're interested in podcasting, here's another video that I think you'll love.